This will be a Hartley's Huddle Extra with Coach Joanna Lane of the STSU Softball League. Coach, uh, hard to think of it, but softball season <laughs> actually starts this week. And uh, give us a season preview of what you got. Well, you know, it is it is a little tough. You have 20 inches of snow or whatever it is outside. So, But uh, that's why we play with yellow ball. And, um, you know, that's, that's what we're, we're going for. But head to Atlanta this weekend, uh, Kennesaw State Tournament, and then on down to Mercer University in Macon, and then Savannah State in Savannah, and then finishing out with Florida State's Invitational in Tallahassee. So a lot of games, 12 games over 10 days, and just looking forward to being outside, warm weather, and, and getting the season started. I guess maybe... You used to lost quite a few games last year. There was maybe some inexperience and experience that kind of went head to head. That maybe caused some struggles for you at times last year. Uh, what's the prognosis going into this year with this team? Obviously, you got quite a few young kids in, on this roster. You know we do, and we try not to focus on last year, even look at last year. It was it was a definitely a growing pain year uh, with with the program, and you're going to have those. You know we uh, we had the toughest schedule in the conference. Uh, we had one of the toughest schedules in the region and the nation. So it's one of those things that you learn from. Uh, we had a lot of seniors thought we'd be able to do some more things with that schedule than we did. Um, so you you learn, you grow, change some things, to take a different approach, and move on. This year is a lot different. We have obviously nine freshmen. On the roster a lot of new faces a new junior college transfer uh, Andrea knew that will do a lot of good things but the athleticism is a lot better this year uh, you know I think we have the depth uh, we have a lot of things that, that we can do to hopefully put some pressure on some defenses uh, you know obviously everything comes down to pitching it happens a lot and you hear that with our game and, and that's going to be something that's to be determined with our team because they're young freshman pitcher sophomore pitcher and uh you know we we want to keep them in games offensively and defensively and and then use them obviously to keep us in games when when we're struggling so as long as we can put together all sides of the ball and and really create a cohesive unit that can go seven innings and and play consistently that's that's all we're looking for Let's look up at the potential lineup for this year. Obviously, you return some great hitters. Uh, just maybe break down the batting order, uh, one through nine. Uh, just who's going to be doing what for you guys this year? Well, you know, we've we've been talking about that the last couple of days in the office with the batting order and, and what we want to do and, and what our approach is. And, you know, we have several different schools of thought amongst the coaching staff. And it will be interesting to see who wins out, uh, which will probably be me. But, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things that you know, you have Ashley Durazo as obviously the focal point of your offense. She's hit above 300 for two years. She was at 345 last year. Um, and, and she's just good. There's just no other way to really say it. She does very, very well. Um, and so right now we're, we're highly considering leading her off uh, with a lack of a postma. This is the first time, you know, a slapper postma. We mm -hmm. obviously have Brianna, but, uh, you know, the lineup is going to be a little different at the top, and, and we won't have Brooke and Brittany up there. Um, we do have a freshman slapper, Devin Reek from Omaha, that is pushing for one of those two top spots. And Pam Nicholson, lefty speed kid, uh, back her sophomore season pushing for one of those spots. But Ashley is just on base so consistently that, you know, really pushing her toward the top of the lineup will maybe give us some more opportunities. Um, we have a lot of kids that can score runs uh, and a lot of kids that can hit them in. You know, I think we have more options for RBI opportunities with Kelsey Lund, with Danny Brocher, with Morgan McCabe, with Andrea New. They're, they're doing very well. Um, you know, Marley Peterson missed all fall. She's a freshman from Omaha. She'll start at second base for us, and she's just really starting to find her groove. I think she'll do pretty well uh, but she might not really do well until the end of the season just because she hasn't seen live pitching consistently you know since the summer uh, in, until this last month so a lot of a lot of options there um, Tina Winter will probably start at third base for us, freshman from Omaha as well. Uh, and then some kids knocking at the door. Kelsey Waltz, a freshman from Minneapolis, uh, is really trying to find a spot in the lineup and is hitting well and, and will deserve a chance here really soon. And Emily Harrett, another kid from Omaha, a freshman, uh, six-footer, can play anywhere in the infield, pitches a little bit, um, you know, and she's really looking for a spot and, and doing well. So a lot of options, something we haven't seen in a long time and uh, something we're very much looking forward to. Sounds like with your recruiting class, you may be recruited towards those bigger areas, Twin Cities, Omaha, kind of, is that kind of where a lot of the hotbed is this, this past year? Or? 
You know, a lot of a lot of our kids have to come from out of state because of the the lack of softball sponsorship in South Dakota. It's growing. It's getting better every year. You know, we have Brianna Postma, Becca Timmer, that are South Dakota natives. Obviously, the Postmas have done well here, um, Brittany and Brooke. But they were playing out of the Twin Cities, is getting opportunities. And so, as South Dakota continues to grow, we are forced to look nationally. Um, you know, our freshman class, we have five from Omaha. We have a, a Minneapolis kid, two South Dakota kids, and then we also have excuse me, a, a pitcher from Seattle. Uh, kids coming in next year that we signed, one from Texas, one from Seattle, one from Chicago, one from Lincoln. Uh, so they're all over. I think Omaha is doing a very good job with softball. Um, Nebraska and Creighton have been successful with Nebraska kids. Um, Minnesota having only uh, the University of Minnesota to pull from, you know, they, they leave a lot of kids that are available, uh, and, and we found a couple of those this year, and, and that's a, an area we'll continue to look at. Um, you can't debate that the overall hotbed is in California. It's in Arizona. It's in Washington, Oregon. Uh, it's growing immensely in the south. The difference is we can get kids from the west coast. We can't get a lot of kids from the south because there are so many schools there than there are on the west coast, and just the ratio of players to schools out west is so much lower that those kids grow up knowing they're going to leave, and they don't have as much um, you know, hesitation in, in choosing a school that's out of their comfort level and, and out of their geographic location. I guess looking at that season, what's the biggest challenge for this team? Is it just staying together as a cohesive unit, or is there maybe getting that experience factor in? I think it will be pitching experience. I think that's going to be the big key for us. Uh, Tracy Oddix, our pitching coach, definitely has her hands full. Uh, you have a freshman and you have a sophomore, uh, and, and that's it. You know, you're going to run with two and, and go and see what happens. Um, you know, I think this is the most cohesive team we've had since I've been here, uh, and, and I love it. They come to practice every day, and they're working hard. They get along. They hang out with each other outside of the sport. They care immensely for each other. Um, you know, we've, we've all had our moments, and anytime you put that many girls together in a, in a group, you're going to have some issues, but, uh, you know, they have gelled really well the last couple weeks. Uh, I can't wait for the road trip. Usually, you know, you're going to take a 12-day road trip. You get nervous because it's long, um, but I can't wait. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. You know, I think the kids are, are going to be in good spirits the most of the time. Uh, so I think with, with pitching, that's going to be the key. And then I think it's going to be consistent offensive output. Uh, we've told our kids from the get-go, it's just my personal philosophy, you need to score five runs a game to win. Um, and, and that's where we put our pitchers. You know, we want our pitchers to be at a 3-0 ERA, and we want our, our hitters to score five runs a game. And you do both of those, you're going to have a, a really, really good year. So that's what we're looking for. That's what we're, we're working towards. And, and I think we're going to be able to do that, hopefully a little more consistently than we did last year. And, you know, a credit to, to the team. They also don't have Arizona State. They don't have UCLA. They don't have a lot of those opponents on the schedule that we were faced with last season. Thank you, Coach. That was Joanna Lane with the SDSU Softball Program for a Hartley's Hollow Extra.